Way back in October of 2015, Apple releases an updated version of their 2009 Magic Mouse, calling it the Magic Mouse, or Gen 2 Magic Mouse, or whatever. What changes were made? Well, now it has a lightning port because the mouse is now rechargeable. Goodbye AA batteries and hello lightning port at the bottom, so charging and using the mouse simultaneously is just... bleh. You get what I mean. But if we look beyond the placement of said orifice and see what else this mouse does, well, is it worth the extra dough over, say, a gaming mouse or even an ergonomic mouse? What's up everyone, I'm Jonathan from Jopatech, and if you haven't already, a sub to the channel would be groovy. Now let's go ahead and check out why the hell anyone would spend this much money on a wireless mouse from 2015 in 2023. Let's start by getting the specs out of the way. Maybe this thing has some rhodium in it or something. The Magic Mouse comes in at just shy of 100 grams at 99.2. With a width of 57.1 millimeters, height of 21.6 millimeters, and overall length of 113.5 millimeters. It uses a laser eye with an operating resolution of 1300 dpi. It connects wirelessly through Bluetooth 3.0 or wired with a lightning cable and is ambidextrous. The built-in battery is a 1986 milliampere rechargeable lithium polymer battery which can take anywhere between 2 to 3 hours to charge and last for just over a month with normal use. There are no physical buttons on the mouse, however, there is an actual click when you depress the top. You can set a left and right click function and the top surface seconds as a trackpad allowing for swiping between pages and apps, scrolling up and down and side to side, as well as opening up Mission Control. Retail price for this black color is 119 Canadian dollars. <laughs> Yikes. The boring white Magic Mouse retails for 89 Canadian dollars, but you know, boring. All right, so the specs are out of the way and now we move on to how the mouse actually feels and functions. <laughs> I remember back as a kid in school, there was a giant ball inside the top right of the keyboard. <laughs> Look where we are now. The ability to observe computational navigation mechanisms evolved through time with not only functional improvements, but through style as well, is totally gnarly. I will hand it to Apple on this one. The bloody thing feels nice to use. Its low profile makes it feel like your hand is gliding on your desk. It fits into almost any pocket and could also be used as a crotch stuffer for those lacking proper endowment but don't want to pursue a career in politics. The click is very satisfying and gesture navigation works extremely well, until my large hand completely smothers it and causes the screen to seize unintentionally. The mouse can be a little weird to use at times, but only depending on where I'm using it. At my standing desk, I have no comfort issues. Sitting at a low table, like a dining room table, and it can be a little awkward to use, especially with an ergo mouse pad. Sitting at my island, I have no issues with discomfort. How easy is it to use and set up? Well, if you aren't aware, it's 2023. That's all. Like, turn on the switch at the bottom of the mouse, open Bluetooth in your system settings, et voila. Connect and you're done. Or you can just connect the mouse to your computer via the provided cable, which is a nice cable by the way, so kudos to you, Apple. The Magic Mouse also works on the iPad, running iPad OS 13.4 or later. So why the hell would anyone spend $119 on a damn mouse? Well, I have my reasons, and you probably do too, but you have to listen to mine. Voice yours down in the comment section below. My reasons? Simple. If you're anything like me, you are probably over 30, things in your body are hurting or starting to hurt, and using the trackpad while standing in a funky position really sucks. The Magic Mouse sounded like a great alternative to using the trackpad for extended periods of time, and that is true with me. Whether I'm sitting or standing, being able to move my arm and shift my body around ever so slightly is a game changer. Sure, I lose some of the functionality of the trackpad, but Giving my arm a rest and still being able to navigate effortlessly can be a big thing for many people. So yeah, it's kind of stupid to design a mouse in a way that makes it useless when charging. That is a caveat to a slim form factor, yes, and I try to look at things in a more positive way. Let's just say you're working a long shift, and you gotta charge your mouse. That's the perfect time for you to stand up, maybe get the blood flowing, go for a little walk, grab a drink of water, who knows, step away from the work, and bam. 
couple minutes of charge, according to Apple, will get you around an hour's worth of use, if not a little bit more. In conclusion, I will say the Magic Mouse is a great side companion to my M1 MacBook Air. It adds one more option for me and how I navigate my laptop. For 119 Canadian dollars, probably not, but I made that purchase for all of you. 89 Canadian dollars for the boring white color, a better deal. 50 Canadian dollars on the used market, hmm, now I'm listening. If you are using anything other than a MacBook, I would recommend getting the Magic Trackpad or even more so, an Ergo Vertical Style Mouse. Here in Canada, you can find a great Ergo Mouse for around $100 and your arm will say, thanks, desk jockey. Do you have a Magic Mouse? Do you remember mice from way back in the day? Comment your thoughts down below and let's get chatting. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would ask that you do, so I can continue making videos for all of you. Go ahead and explore my other tech videos, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.